Hi, I'd like to uh, do a demonstration here of using the segmented controller and the scroll view. And here's what my final example will look like. Um, this is a scroll view here. It's an, I have the interaction turned off so we can't drag it with our finger. And then I have a segmented controller up here. And when I click the second one, you can see the scroll view slides left and right. There we go. And you could, uh, you know, increase the number of segments here and increase the size of your scroll view too. I just have two, um, two areas here, right? So uh, there's my example. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, here's all of the code that I have. That's pretty much the whole thing. And, um, you know, in storyboard, I have this, right? So you can see in storyboard, the size of the screen here is actually twice the size of what we see in the, um, in the simulator, right? You know, and that way I can see both areas of the scroll view. So this is the entire area that we're scrolling. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the example. So let me close this. And I'll close that one. And then I'm going to make a new, um, a new example here. So I'll start with an iOS source, right? So I just did, you know, file new project. And I'm going to choose iOS application, um, single view application, right? And I'll say scroll view segmented example. Let's call it that, right? And then the, uh, the language will be Swift. And then we can do device iPhone and turn off these options here, okay? And then I'll save this to my examples folder here. I think I have a folder for scroll view examples. There it is. So I'll save this into the folder there. And so our first step is to um, is to create the storyboard and set up the, the objects in storyboard. So I'll switch to storyboard here. And we should plan the device that we're using. So uh, maybe I'll plan this one out for the iPhone um, 6. So I'll click on the view controller choose size of 4.7 inch which is iPhone 6 and so the width of this uh, the the width of the screen here should be 375 points right so what I want to do is I want to add a scroll view here but you know it's going to scroll between two pages of content and so I want to be able to see the content here in storyboard so you know essentially I need to make this view controller twice as wide right so I'll switch to the, um, the metrics area here with the little ruler. And it says simulated size. You'll have to have the view controller selected for that to show up, right? And I'll, I'll switch it to free form, okay? And so it says width is 375. And so I want to make this double 375. What is that? That's going to be 6, um, 750. Is that right? There we go, right? So there's 750. That looks about twice as wide, right? Okay, so now we've got our big area to work on. And so the first step now is to add a scroll view. So I'm going to scroll through the objects palette here. <clears throat> and the scroll view looks like this one right here. And it says scroll view on it, right? You can, you can find it with the filter if you like to. So there's our scroll view there. And the scroll view is used in a lot of things. The text view uses a scroll view and the... Um, the uh, table view controller uses the scroll view, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the scroll view into our view here. And we'll want it. It doesn't have to take up the entire screen, but we'll want it to take up the entire screen, you know, or at least almost all the screen, right? So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to bring the top down, and I'm just going to snap the edges. Make sure the little blue lines kind of, you know, those little dashed lines show up along the edges, and that'll, that'll, make sure that it's snapped to the edges, right? And so now I have a little bit of space up here at the top, okay? And um, let's add a segmented controller now. So this is our segmented controller here. And you can add more than one or more than two segments, right? This has uh, just two on it by default, but you can add more. So I'll just do the two for now, okay? And we're going to use auto layout. So even though this is twice as big, what's going to happen is the screen's going to scale down to a smaller size, right, when we're in the simulator. And the, the auto layout constraints we apply will 
you know, resize all these elements. So this segmented controller is just going to always be this distance from the left and the right and the top, okay? So anyway, so we're set there, okay? So let's get the segmented controller out of the way because this is really the smallest part of the whole puzzle. So uh, I'll click on the segmented controller and go to the pin menu down here, and I want to pin the left, top, and right edges. The bottom doesn't matter, and we don't have to set the, the height. This has an intrinsic height, so the computer always knows how tall it is, right? So we don't need to set that. So I'll add three constraints, and then that guy's happy. All the constraints are blue. And now for the scroll view. <coughs> so the first step with the scroll view is to um, pin the, f the four sides, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the pin menu here, and um, I'm going to turn off the constraint to margins. And so the edges here should say 0, 0, and 0, and then the top edge should be about 15 or how many ever, you know, how much ever space you left there. So um, I'm going to pin all four edges like this, right? And there we go. So now that's pinned, right? So now let's take a look at the outline view. And you'll see I have a scroll view here, and the scroll view is really a container that you put other things inside of. So what we need to do for the scroll view to work is we need to grab the UI view and drag it into the scroll view like this. It's a little hard to see because it's white on white, so I'll, I'm going to change the color of this view. I'll go to the property palette or the attributes inspector and uh, you know choose a new color here. Um, we'll make it uh, green. How about that, right? So there's our, our view. And you'll see that the, the view here, <coughs> this content view for the scroll view now is inside the scroll view. We can tell because it's indented here, right? So this is the main view. That is the whole window. This is the scroll view right here. And then inside the scroll view, we have this view that we've created. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this view um, reaches all the way to the edges of our scroll view, okay? And you can make this view transparent, you can give it a color, you can make it white, um, you know, it could be any color, okay? So it's got to go all the way to the edges, okay? So I got it all the way to the four edges. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pin this to the edges of the scroll view, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go to the pin menu and we'll pin the four sides. Make sure you uncheck constrain to margins there, and so these should all be zero. And we'll just pin the four edges. Okay, and then we'll add four constraints. Now, uh, auto layout is giving me these red lines. I'm not quite sure why, if that's supposed to be there or I'm missing something. This is the system that always seems to work for me, um, even though it's showing me an error, okay? So anyway, so the thing here about this is that um, when we pin this element to the scroll view, it d the, the constraints there don't work like normal. So when the scroll view is pinned to the outer edges of the main view, it is going to shrink to the size of this main view. But when we pin this to the edges of the scroll view, the scroll view is going to recognize the size of this thing and use that as the area to scroll, okay? So normally, like if you pin this to the edges here, if the, if the scroll view shrank, then this should shrink too. But in the case of scroll view, that doesn't happen, okay? At least that's the way I understand it, okay? Um, so anyway, so there we go. So let's put a little bit of content in here so that we can um, see when we're scrolling, right? So I'll just drag a box in here like this, kind of roughly position it. And then maybe I'll drag another one over on this side you know, something like that, right? And you could give these a color if you want. Uh, make that one kind of blue, and we'll make this one. Uh, um, sometimes you got to close that color picker and then reopen it again to get it to work. I'll make that one orange, right? Okay, so there we go. And you can actually add constraints to this and constrain it to the to the content view here, right? So, you know, these could have constraints if we needed them to change sizes. I'm going to leave that out now just to, you know, avoid the complexity of it for, for the video, right? So anyway, so here we go. So now we're all set. And the other thing we need to do is we need to create some outlets. So we need an outlet to a couple things. We need an outlet to the segmented controller, and we need an outlet for the, um, for the view 
uh, the scroll view, okay? So I have a view controller here. I'm going to hit the, um, the, uh, the option key, and I'll click on Storyboard. So now Storyboard will be open here in the Assistant Editor. And what I'd like to do is control drag or right click and drag from the segmented controller in here. And actually I said outlet, but you know what we want to do with the segmented controller is we want to use an action. So I'm going to switch this connection to action and I'll say segmented control. Okay. And uh, I'll switch that to UI segmented control and the event we want is value changed. So that means when you choose a different item here, it'll notify us through this action. Okay, so we'll click connect and there's our new action there. And then now I want to get an outlet to the scroll view. Now it's hard to click on the scroll view here in this um, view area or the preview area. So I'll open up the, um, the outline view and this is the scroll view here and we can drag from this into our view controller. Okay, so I'll call this scroll view. Okay. And uh, let's give our project a quick test here. Oops, site tested on the 6 plus. Let me test on the 6. So I switched to the 6 because that's the, what, the size that I used here. And we could use some constraints to make it fit other sizes, but we'd have to constrain the, the content inside the scroll view, right? Um, so that's why I'm going to test at the size that I created. And then if that works, then we can go on and add constraints later, right? Let's see here. I got to wait for the simulator to start up. There we go. Almost ready. Any second now. Maybe there's some, oh no, there it is, right? Oh, so there's our scroll view, right? Now, I want to be able to use the segmented controller to scroll this, but you can see right now I can just drag it between the two sides, right? So, so that's pretty good, right? And actually, let me do that one more time. Um, so there's a couple options on scroll view that you should be aware of, and we'll point those out while we're here. So I'll start that again, and you can see as I drag and I leave it halfway, you know, the scroll view is okay with that, right? Um, if we have pages of content, we might want the scroll view to snap to a particular page so it doesn't stop halfway. It just slides all the way to one side or the other, right? So uh, let's go do that. <clears throat> so I'm going to close um, the assistant editor, open up the attributes inspector again, and I'll select the scroll view here and in the attributes inspector under scroll view you'll see it says uh, horizontal scrolling indicator uh, vertical indicator uh, scrolling enabled and then there's an option here that says paging enabled so if we turn on paging it should snap to one page or the other okay so I'm going to use that here we actually in the end we won't really even need this um, but this is kind of a nice one and actually works well in this type of example. You know, especially if you're doing a, a horizontal scroller, like you don't want it to stop halfway between pages usually. Vertical, maybe it's okay, right? Um, so we'll test it again here. Any moment there. Why is my simulator not working there? Let's try it one more time. Yeah, you know, I think my simulator quit on me. Let me do this. If that ever happens to you where, like, now I can't do anything in the simulator, if you're in the simulator, go to uh, Simulator uh, Reset Content and Settings. Okay, so I'll just reset that and uh, it'll be ready in a moment. But anyway, we'll come back to that, right? So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to let that, that reset and then we'll do a little work here. 
So anyway, so we've got our stuff working here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to the view controller here, and our segmented control is going to notify us when you choose a different, you know, segment, right? And what it does is it gives you this, um, this variable called sender, and that's a reference to the segmented control in Storyboard. And sender has um, a property called selected segment index, okay? And that is a, an integer, and it's the integer that is the, the, the segment on the, um, on the control. So the first one is zero, the second one is one, right? And then the third one would be two. So this is the zero, one, two, three, four, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a switch statement and say switch sender dot selected segment index curly braces case of zero then do this case of one do this and then we should include a default um, just in case one of these cases doesn't work right so there's our stuff there right but now we have to include some code here right okay um so what we want to do is we want to tell the scroll view to scroll to a particular position, okay? So what we'll do is we'll say scroll view dot um, set content offset, okay? So set content offset. And set content offset uh, scrolls the scroll view to a particular location, and you can animate it by setting the animated variable to true. So um, the this variable right here, this parameter um, content offset requires a CG point. So we're going to type in CG point, and then we're going to make a new CG point. And a CG point you can see here has two properties. It's got um, X and a Y. So we want to scroll, if we want to go to the first page, we want the X value to be zero and the Y value to be zero. Okay? And the animated to be true. And then for the second page, we'll type in scroll view, set content offset, CG point. And uh, the CG point that we want here, remember the width of our page is 375. And we could actually calculate the width of the page from the view size here. But just to keep things simple, I'm gonna, I'm gonna type the number in now and then we can refactor our code and improve it later. Um, but right now, just to get it working, I'll type in 375, and then Y will be zero, because we don't want to scroll in the vertical. And then animated will be true, because we want to animate the, uh, the scrolling. And if something happens that is not, like if some reason this, the segmented control gives us a value other than zero or one, well we can just print something here as the default, like what is going on? You know, something is not working there, right? Okay, so I'll save this. And then um, I'll test my project again in the simulator here. My reset simulator, which is hopefully going to work this time. Oh, there we go. And now if I click on the thing, you can see that it slides back and forth between the two views, right? Now I can still drag it. And if you don't want that behavior, you know, you can go to storyboard, select your scroll view, and turn off um, scrolling enabled, okay? And then that means you won't be able to scroll it by hand, by swiping, but we still will be able to scroll it with the segmented control, okay? Try that one more time. And here we are, so now I can't scroll this way, but I can still scroll programmatically, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that that is helpful, um, and that's kind of an interesting project. I could see a lot of stuff being built with this, right? So thanks again.